Okay, we're back, folks. We're talking with, I believe, Rich Anderson out of Minneapolis, yeah. Minnesota. Rich, are you there? You, you bet. Good morning, Larry. Good morning, Rich. Someone just posted something in the TFNN room that just literally startled me. And this Tesla is now worth more than Exxon, Chevron, Shell, and British Petroleum combined. Can can you believe that? I mean, that that's just mind-boggling. Well, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's, they have a, their their primary thing isn't isn't the car it's the battery you know I mean battery uh -huh. storage is going to be huge for everybody and there's going to be you know 20 30 different companies coming out with electric cars I I think they're getting a little over their skis but it's it's there's not a lot of float and so the guys there've been guys short this for years and they just get squeezed and squeezed and squeezed and you know it's it's just it's not a game I'm willing to play. By, by the way, when you're t talking stocks, your good friend Jeff wrote a very interesting article uh, last night about anniversary dates and how WD mm -hmm. Gann liked anniversary dates. You might uh, check that out. It's very Scott, interesting. Gonna he's going to be our he, guest tomorrow. Well, perfect. Then, then definitely yeah. ask him about that because he did a very nice job. I think the thing that people are focused on right now in the, in the stock market in general is do we or don't we get a, a package? Mnuchin and Pelosi have been working, um, but they're almost a billion dollars apart. And then you have the two central bankers of the world, Lagarde, who's going to say today that the primary thing isn't the risk of COVID, but the risk of fiscal support disappears. And Powell is essentially going to say the same thing in the United States. So that's that's kind of how I see the uh, overall view of the stock market and equities in general. Okay, we had a couple questions uh, from uh, Monday's show that uh, some folks asked us about. And Rich, how many different services do you take as far as uh, weather and uh, information that you get from uh, from people? I know you read incessantly, but uh, it, can you tell the folks how you handle all that information? Well. You know, in this day and age, information is it, it, so plentiful that you have to pick the wheat from the chaff. It's like drinking water from a fire hose. You know, you know, I probably get it in uh, four or five hundred emails a, a day, and I will scan. There's certain ones. There's maybe a dozen that I'll, I'll actually open and read everything. Otherwise, I'm scanning uh, headlines and seeing what's of interest, and and then it, if I catches my eye, then I'll del delve deeper into it. You know, um, it's just like when I'm scanning charts, I'm looking for uh, symmetrical patterns and stuff like that. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I'm looking for, as Bryce Gilmore used to say, picture perfect, you know, it, if it's picture perfect, it just jumps off the screen at you. I'm not looking for this or that, but, you know, mm -hmm. it'll, it'll just click and I'll have heard it or seen it a couple other times. And so then I drill down on it. That, that's okay. how I do it. So there's probably, there, there, I mean, the, the world takes the world weather right now. You've got delayed plantings in uh, Paraná and Mato Grosso. They're the two biggest states for production of beans in Brazil. You know, they're a third behind their five year average. They're a third of their five year average, and they're half of last year, which was below average. And how that how is that important? Because if they don't get the beans planted early then they can't go and double crop corn is their second crop, which is 70% of their corn production. So this is a big deal down in Brazil. You know, we don't have real good weather on Brazil. We don't have real good weather. Uh, well, we got decent weather in Brazil, but China, you know, I mean, the only things you hear about China is when, like, they had that 30 inches of rain that really messed up their crop of maybe three, four weeks ago now. So uh -huh. during the, the growing season, I'm watching the weather here in this country and, and the U.S. Weather Service does a good job, and there's all these other advisor services that you can pay money for, but I, I may mainly just focus on the U.S. Weather Service. I do not try and trade uh, weather markets. You know, I, I'm just looking for major trends. I do not try and trade reports. You always, you know, hear me say that I, I think a bullish report is that the market closes higher after the, after the reports come out. I mean, I could go through numbers of – what they're looking for this Friday. And this Friday, by the way, is, is considered a big report and can have a bunch of surprises. And, and what the USDA is saying, the yields are going to be right now versus what the farmers are getting, there's, you know, 10, 11 bushel difference in the corn 
in two or three bushels different in the beans, and a one bushel difference in the beans when we expect them to increase their exports by 125 million to put the carryover of beans under two, 200 million bushels, and then all of a sudden you're talking uh, 2015-16 prices. I mean, down in Brazil yeah. right now, they're getting like $13 for beans and $5 for their corn. Uh, so this whole world's interwoven. And then you've got over in Russia, the, the wheat areas right now are experiencing very little rain, similar to 1966, where they didn't really get rain until the end of October, then it got cold in November. Uh, you know, so you look for analog years when you start to see patterns. That's that's how I do it. But wow, I've been that's doing really it for good information. Years, it's a long time. Mm-hmm. What about what about the uh, situation of this report that comes? Is, is, it, on, is it on Thursday or Friday? The re- right, break? right, and it's a big report. And like my buddy Mark, I you know I would highly recommend you get him on next week to explain it to you. I mean. I just happen to know a lot of smart guys like you. You know, I'm just a poor farmer. <laughs> Thanks for the compliment, Chief. I respect your opinion, however wrong it may be. <laughs> Folks, if you knew how much Rich Anderson read you, it would literally, uh, it would literally startle you. Rich, what's going on with the hogs? Are they still having uh, trouble with uh, hogs over in China? Uh, well, well, they're repopulating over in China. The, the problem is the Asian swine flu in Germany, and so all these Asian companies that normally buy a certain percentage of their pork from Germany now have to go to another market, and guess what? We're that other market. Oh, and by the way, if they don't get the beans planted in Brazil, they can't get them harvested early, and that means that we probably have another two or three weeks of extra marketing for soybeans, and where we're the only game in town come February and March. You know, all these things are interrelated, and you, you got to think globally, and, and China's on holiday right now. But when they come back, we expect that they probably see some more business. And it's just like when COVID started, everybody wanted to stockpile their pantry so they didn't run out of food. Well, other countries are kind of getting that idea, too, right now, you know, that maybe we need yeah. to get some stuff bought. Mexico bought some corn the other day. Uh, there's just a lot of stuff to watch. And, and you never know what the market's focused on. That's why it's important to focus on the charts, because the charts will tell you. It's it's like playing poker with a marked deck. You know, the charts will tell you. Yeah, well, but they you can't have. anticipate what happened last week when they, the USDA decides to go back with an administrative review and revise a crop report from a year ago. Yeah, I mean, so I just don't play that game. I, I, yeah. I want to try and structure my risk intelligently, and I cannot do that. Uh, if I'm going to do that in front of a report, I would buy some – Weekly options is is uh, stop insurance, but and, I don't play the, that game. But if I were to play it, that's how I would play. It. Have the option premiums probably been exploding too uh, in the grain markets? Oh, well, yeah, and before every report, supply volatility goes up, and then as soon as a report book comes out, no matter whether it's bullish or bearish, the volatility will drop one or two vols. You know, hey, Rich, stay with us. Stay strength. with us till after the break, okay, please. All right, you bet. You bet. Rich Anderson, folks. Anderson Capital Management. Okay, folks, we're talking with Rich Anderson of Minneapolis, Minnesota. Rich, two things. First of all, how is the situation for uh, you know the political environment up there with uh, defunding the police? Any any news on that front? No, everybody's focused on the election, and everybody on both sides wants people to get out to vote and vote early. Uh-huh. You know, um, they they they. they the city council of Minneapolis is all powerful. The mayor, it's a weak mayor system. Uh, even the mayor understands that this is not a good idea. The people that live in these communities understand this is not a good idea. It's just a few of these, these young millennials that got elected as city council people think mm-hmm. they know everything, and they uh, unfortunately don't. So that's that's the big problem. But uh, mm-hmm. you know, uh, you have to have faith in the. Uh, in the people that things will eventually work out. And that's that our, that our system of government has been based on rules and property rights, and we need to we need to continue that if we want to experience the success and growth that this country has experienced over the last 200 years. 
Yeah, isn't that the truth? Rich, I posted a chart in the room for the Treasury bonds. Uh, I mean, we've uh, talked about negative interest rates, and they've certainly gone anywhere but negative lately in the Treasury bond rates. have been going down now for about uh, six weeks. And uh, we've major support here at the 78% level at uh, 173. Do you have, a, you have a feeling on what the bonds are going to do over the next uh, three to four weeks? Well, well, one of my observations on – market patterns in general is that these markets like to retest highs and lows. The bonds are retesting a low, and the failure to, uh, or the bear camp to push the market through that low uh, will tell me that uh, enough's enough, and then the traders will come in and they'll reverse and they'll take it back up. Uh, you know, so I'm, I'm watching that with keen interest right now. You know, that, that John Hill, I think, used to call it like a flush and rinse, you know, where they take out a, a point and they can't follow through and then it, it reverses. And and that's what's kind of going on in the bonds right now. But, you know, it's, it's still early in the day, and, and that's uh, one to keep an eye on, definitely. You know, that's going to probably have some uh, implications into the election because of the fact that the Fed's doing so much of these little games that they're playing with everybody. It's uh, really amazing. We used to think that uh, Greenspan was bad, but my goodness, these guys are pumping money into it like we've never seen before. So I guess there's going to be an end to it someday, but but who knows? By the way, Rich, do you have a uh, – someone's asking a question here in the den. Do you have uh, – do you have an op opinion of uh, how the election's going to turn out? Not, not not so much on the presidential race, but as far as the senatorial things. Do you have a feeling on that? Well, I, I mean, you, you see these polls, but, uh, you know, the polls have been off before in Brexit, the last presidential election. Uh, and so, the, you know, that... They're talking about a, a blue sweep right now. It may that could very, very likely may happen, but there could be very well be a surprise. And I wouldn't be surprised if we have a, a split between the Senate and the House. The House, you know, has a high probability of uh, being controlled by the Democrats. But I would I would think there is a, a better and even chance that the Republicans will somehow prevail in the Senate. Um, but it'll be interesting. It's all who shows up at the polls. And there's been voting here in Minnesota for weeks now by mail. And, uh, you know, I mean, the state of Michigan has just said that, you, you know, we'll count ballots that have been mailed two weeks after the election. I mean, give me a break. I don't understand yeah. that. But then I'm, a, I'm not a judge, yeah. you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. We've got. We'll get off the politics now. But I had, you know, someone asked the question. I figured uh, if they were kind enough to ask it, we should answer it. But uh, Mr. C is asking about winter wheat over in the U.S. and in the Black Sea area. How bad are the conditions over there, Rich? Well, the, the Black Sea area. I mean, uh, a weather forecast by the name of Drew Lerner, Lerner uh, wrote an article last week about how it's comparing to 1966. So it, it's a pretty big deal over in in Europe. Um, it, it's less of a deal here in the U.S. It's more of a, a big deal over there. But you, you have always look at what, the, what are the cash markets doing? What are the spread markets doing? What, what, what do they tell you? And the cash markets are telling you that there's strength. You know, I'm surprised that you can see the grains making new highs before this report on Friday. Since 1990, I think there's been 15 years when the USDA lowered its crop from August to September. But in only six of those years, did it continue to lower the crop from September to October? Now, that doesn't that doesn't mean they were right. You know, the, the yields are coming in way different than what the USDA is forecasting. But they they piece out. They decide how they're going to piece that information out. And at and once the report's out, those are the numbers you're dealing with until the next report. So even if you think that they're wrong, it doesn't matter. That's that's the numbers you're trading. That's why I don't play that game. Yeah, I see that. Rich, uh, has the USDA now, they've really improved their the way that they, you know, because they use drones and everything now, don't they, as far as uh, picking out what uh, uh, what these crops are doing. Is that correct? Um, the, the professional traders uh, use the drones. The, the USDA's had um, budget cuts just like everybody else. Oh, okay. And so yeah. they, they aren't necessarily, you know, 
at, on the cutting edge. Uh, unfortunately, that's just the way it is with, with the government. I mean, look at yeah. England. Uh, their Excel spreadsheet for, it was full, and so it didn't count 16,000 COVID cases. You know, governments, whether it be here or England or any place, you know, are not necessarily always on the cutting edge because they're so big and they need so much. And yeah. then you have balancing budgets, and they, they do the best they can. Yeah, I know. Uh, size but Cargill and, and all the green companies, they they got the drones, they got the satellites. They can tell you within a half a bushel what something's going to be from a satellite picture. Wow. <laughs> Rich, I remember about 10 years ago, we were back in Indiana, and I was taking Sarah back to meet Dr. Ruth and my sister and stuff, and we, we got stuck in one of the, it was around July, and we got stuck in one of these cornfields where <laughs> it was high as an elephant eye, and I couldn't see the, the markings on the road because it's so flat, and I actually got lost. I had to use a GPS to find the, the highway from where I used to live. I mean, that was really embarrassing. They never let me forget that, but uh, yeah. anyway, listen, I want to I want to thank you for being on today, pal, and we'll have you on again in a few weeks. So keep us informed of what you see going on, and uh, as you always do, flash me something that the folks are interested in, and I'll pass it on to them. So be safe, my so, friend. So keep, keep, keep in mind that it's kind of like the pantries. You're going to the store, and all of a sudden the shelves are empty. These countries don't want to have the shelves be empty, so they're preemptively buying stuff because they know mm -hmm. China's buying, and, and we've got these weather situations. That's what's going on. You have a great yeah. day. Trade well. Thank you. You bet. Thank you, folks. Rich Anderson, uh, Anderson Capital Management, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Okay, folks, now we're back in the markets here. We're trading at 33.95 in the S&P. Uh, we had a nice little run here, about 50 points up and 50 points down in the NASDAQ, which is nothing unusual. We went from uh, 1440 up to 1480 and 1480 down to 1430, so it moved 110 points while we were taking that five-minute break, so nothing happening there. Uh, the crude oil is back at the same level at uh, the 4067. We're now trading at 4071. That's the first sign that this might not work. We'll be right back, folks.